Hi everyone. So today we're going to be looking at a passage together from the Gospel of John. John was one of Jesus' closest followers. He was an eyewitness of Jesus' public ministry and he was present at the scene of Jesus' crucifixion, death by Roman execution, with his mother Mary. He was also with Jesus' other followers when Jesus appeared to them in his resurrection body and he was an eyewitness of Jesus' body, bodily resurrection. He seemed to have a deeper understanding of Jesus' ministry and his mission. The passage contains the most famous Bible verse, uh, which is John 3.16. And John 3.16 says that, For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, die, but have everlasting life. We're going to read the story of how this Bible verse came about, um, Jesus' meeting with Nicodemus, and then I'll share some thoughts with you afterwards. John chapter 3. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus answered again, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants. Just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these things possible? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, You are a respected Jewish leader, Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things. I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged, for not believing in God's one and only Son. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who, hate, all who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it, for fears their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light, so that others can see that they are doing what God wants. So in this story, Jesus is meeting Nicodemus, who is a member of a, re a ruling religious group at the time called the Pharisees. Nicodemus had heard a lot about Jesus, including all his miracles, and he was curious about who Jesus was. He was a spiritual seeker. He decided to meet Jesus secretly because he wanted to find out more about Jesus, but he was also afraid because he didn't want to upset the other Pharisees, who were mostly against what Jesus was standing for. It is likely that Nicodemus eventually became a follower of Jesus. In this passage, Nicodemus, who is a religious person, shows that he really has no understanding of what God is like. The Pharisees were careful to observe their religious rules and regulations like ceremonial washing to the tiniest detail, but they had no understanding of God's heart. God wasn't interested in people keeping religion or trying to impress him with how good they can be. Jesus told Nicodemus, 
that you cannot enter the kingdom of God, which is a kingdom not of this world, unless you are born again. God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, which includes where we end up when we die, is ultimately a spiritual one. Jesus says that God, the Trinity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, loves humanity, and he wants to save us. That was what his mission was all about, to come into this world, not to judge us or to condemn us, but to give his life as a ransom for all humanity's wrongdoings, for our sins, so that we can be forgiven. God's offering to you his forgiveness and a brand new start, a relationship with him as his child, and a new life which includes having a home in heaven. Jesus gives his credentials for how he is able to say this. No one knows what heaven is like except the one who is from heaven. Jesus, the eternal son of God, who is God himself, part of the Godhead, came from heaven into this world to testify of what heaven is like. And he backed up his words through the miracles he was doing, but ultimately when he came back from the dead, never to die again. The only person in the history of world of the world who has defeated death in this way. There's, more, there's no more urgent time to get right with God and to receive his gift of forgiveness and eternal life. If you want to know you are going to heaven, the Bible tells us that you can know you have eternal life. It comes not from your own goodness, because no one is perfect, but because Jesus took your place and died for your sins, so that God can change your legal standing before him, from being guilty to being set free, born again, a child of God. What God requires of you is to believe in Jesus, putting your hope and trust in what Jesus has done for you, and receiving his gift of eternal life by asking Jesus to be your Lord and Saviour. If you would like to get right with God, please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for what Jesus has done for me. I confess that I'm a sinner and I want to turn away from the wrong things in my life to living for you. Please forgive me. I receive Jesus as my Lord and Saviour and I invite him into my heart. Please change my life and my destiny so that I may have a home in heaven and spend eternity with you in heaven. In Jesus' name.